Sponsored by Wandrium. Life can be anxious. Time can be boring. We are either dying or we're growing. This is the story of primordial tools used to play life's basic rules. Regain the balance. Feel the flow. This is the way of the staff and bow. Since the dawn of time, every human has woken up in the morning to face the same range of emotions. Every day, we will face chaotic, uncontrollable things that cause anxiety, as well as ordered, repetitive tasks that cause boredom and stagnation. Consciously or unconsciously, we're all seeking the balance, the captivating, meaningful middle world where we feel effortlessly engaged and enthusiastic about life. Throughout history, spiritual traditions and martial disciplines have pointed to this place using their own words and concepts, but perhaps the most comprehensible to us now, and the one with the least amount of baggage, is the term flow. Flow can be applied to everything in your life, from the exciting to the mundane, from sports to sitting still, to business and to life. The topics I most enjoy covering in my channel are wilderness survival skills and martial arts and what I feel these both have in common is they force you to simplify life to its absolute basic elements, the foundation of the human experience. And like a building must have strong foundations to stop it from falling, so must we. Now we could explore flow through almost any activity, but to keep it simple, to focus on these foundations, I will concentrate on two of mankind's oldest tools. A long straight stick and a bendy stick with a string on it throwing another stick, otherwise known as the staff and the bow and arrow. I've been obsessed by these tools all my life spending many hours practicing, playing, pondering and researching the martial traditions that perfected their art and I've covered their making and their uses in many of my past videos. In this film I have simplified all I have found into three basic principles that can be used to harness your attention. Unify mind and body in which I believe when implemented in perfect balance open the pathway to flow. Now I'm not claiming to be a martial arts expert, master archer or some kind of cult guru. All I am is just a man who spent a lot of time in the woods playing with sticks, pondering the nature of things. I'm simply a fellow pupil of the process, sharing bearings of a path I try my best to follow. Ultimately flow is inevitable, no words or concepts can explain it fully, it is something that has to be experienced, not conceptualised. It is the way, not the summit. It is the process, not the product. 
It is the totality, not just the target. It's the current, not the river. Therefore, the words I use in this film should be seen as signposts pointing in the direction to follow. Don't cling to the words. My post. Mine. Don't take the signposts with you. Just have them as a reminder on the direction to walk, and you'll figure it out yourself. If any of the concepts I use are lost in you, hey, don't worry about it. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you ever found yourself lost in the wild with absolutely nothing, one of the first things you might find yourself picking up or making is a good stick. You can swing it about, you can throw it, helps keep you balanced in rough terrain, makes you feel safer. And whenever I run survival courses for kids or adults alike, whenever someone finds a good stick in the woods, there's some sort of primal instinct or ancestral memory that awakens within them. It's really funny to see. They want to swing it about, they want to hit different things with it and see what happens. And for a moment, they are completely engaged in the exploration of that task. And then this complete engagement and enthusiasm with any task, we can find flow. For well over 90% of our existence, we've been hunter-gatherers where the aim of the survival game is to hunt, gather, rest, digest, fight, and flight. And our minds are essentially the same still driven by these primordial tasks, and a good stick can be used to support all of them. It's been in our hands for as long as we've been considered human. If you understand the principles of swinging a stick, you have the foundations to wield any other tool. The next character in the story, in comparison, was the technological leap. The bow and arrow. Now the oldest recorded evidence of its use is around 64,000 years old, but we've probably been using it longer than that. When I teach beginners archery in my courses, they often pick up the basics really quickly, and I often wonder whether there is a instinctual, ingrained intuition for the weapon within all of us. Put simply, at some point in our distant past we figured out that the right stick can store energy when bent, so by holding it in tension using fashion cordage, we could gather and transfer the stored energy into another stick, projecting it forwards towards the target. Over the passage of time, cultures all around the world perfected their own bow design and shooting style. But what interests me the most is our shared fascination with trying to hit targets with projectiles, whether that's by shooting, throwing, hitting or kicking, we are absolutely obsessed by it and we go mad for it. Why is this? We are target driven animals, both literal and metaphorical and when we find ourselves in that place of calm concentration immersed in the task of target hitting, we feel flow. Archery is one of our oldest target hitting obsessions and is deeply ingrained with our primal instinct to hunt for food to keep us alive. When we understand the principles of archery, you have the foundations of hitting any target, whether literal or in life. From a martial perspective, what these two tools have in common is that you're basically trying to create a stable structure of mind and body from which to launch as much energy as possible towards a target, while also not leaving yourself too exposed for energy heading back your way. This is applicable to many things in life and the aim is to find a way to sustain this across time. So how can we use these primordial tools to feel the flow for the art of living? Well, first of all, we need to realize one fundamental truth. All we really have in our life is our attention. Our attention is finite, and this is the foundation of choice. It affects how successful we are at any given task. It determines how we experience the passage of time and ultimately the quality of our life. Now more than ever in the world of the smartphone, infinite information and big tech, our attention is being harvested and directed on a mass scale never seen before in human history. Now more than ever we need to find ways to regain it, to save enough of it for ourselves to find the balance within and direct it towards our own targets to live the life we want. 
The martial masters of the past were ultimately masters of their attention, and from studying disciplines from both East and West, I have noticed three recurring principles. Our minds have a natural tendency to take the path of least resistance, to grab the short-term fix over the long-term gain. But if left to these tendencies, we will have no tools of resilience for when life bears down upon us. We are a slave to our own desires and are too easily hypnotised by the constantly passing shiny shiny things. In order to break free of the cycle, we must have an initial force to get us on the path. And it's for this reason that all martial masters emphasise discipline as the foundation of the way. Originating from the Latin word for pupil and related to the word disciple, it is what makes us the faithful follower of our own self-mastery. Discipline is what builds a strong, structured foundation to stand steady when the storm rages and the drive to paddle through the waters when they stagnate. It is the hand on our back pushing us to the edge of our comfort zone, constantly pressure testing the weakness in our mental and physical armour. This is the world of order and form, sweat and callous. It is the relentless routine of repetition, repetition, repetition. When the mind says, I'm bored, I'm anxious, discipline says, shut up and do it anyway. I'll never be as good an archer as Lars Anderson. Just knock another arrow and repeat. I'll, I'll never, never be Ben at a staff, staff fight. fight. Just take the hit and keep going. When life throws an arrow your way, discipline says... Next one. Discipline is the arm of willpower that creates the space for the other two principles to flourish. It finds the target, breaks down the steps and provides the determination to get there. It is the forceful aspect of life to control what you can and to just keep going. But alone, discipline is not enough. It is too hard, too structured, too predictable and tight, repressed and joyless, too target driven, emotional and empty. Alone, it is difficult to sustain and will tire to the fact that most of life is completely out of our control. Therefore, it must be balanced with the second principle. Many terms can be used to describe the second principle, such as meditation or mindfulness, but I prefer detachment as it has less baggage and has a very literal meaning. To unattach from the mind that runs the majority of our life. Meditation practice is a large part of Eastern martial arts and its power cannot be underestimated. Our brain uses a huge amount of energy and although the mind can be useful when applied to problem solving and planning, the vast majority of our thoughts are completely useless. Our minds are constantly running down rabbit holes of fantasies and anxieties, judging, categorizing, digging up random memories from the past, self-praising and self-deprecating all at the same time. You're amazing, well done man, you're so cool. No you're not, you're such a loser. 
Most humans live with an almost constant internal dialogue that is so normal we don't even realise it's happening. It burns up our energy, gets emotional about everything, clouds judgement and gets in the way of flow. We create a reality in four simple steps. One, input comes into our brain via our senses. Our brain then interprets these senses. It then creates feelings and emotions about said interpretation. Finally, we either crave more of the feeling or want less of it, which drives our actions. Steps 2 to 4 often feed back on each other, creating a never-ending loop which has little to do with what is actually happening in the outside world, burning up our attention and energy. Steps 1 to 3 are largely out of our control, but we can gain some autonomy and efficiency of mind by breaking the last step, which in turn breaks the cycle. Let go of wanting more or less of whatever thoughts or emotions you have. Let them be, but detach from them. Being attached to your thoughts is as futile as clinging to the clouds on a windy day, or a bubble floating in a stream. When we detach from them, we save so much energy to attend to how things actually are, not our thoughts about them. Detachment is the softness to yield and to get out of its own way, for to best hold on to something is to be willing to let go. Discipline is what lines up the target and creates a strong structure to launch from. Detachment is what stills the mind, focuses the light of attention to the task at hand, relaxes and just lets go. The mind will get emotional whether the target is hit or not. Detachment smiles and watches on, knowing that hitting the target is less important than the continual process of trying. Often when we think too much, we become less accurate, and when we just do, unburdened by thought, we hit the target. Discipline is the how, detachment is the where. For the where is always right here, right now. The future is a projection, the past a recall. Unclouded by thought, we can react faster to what life throws our way. Using minimal necessary force, we can sustain our energy across time. Here, it is impossible to take anything personally, as you need the past to be a person. However, alone detachment can be too soft too non-reactive, too passive. When coupled with discipline, there is balance, yet it's still not complete. It is too predictable, lacks spontaneity and creativity. Therefore, it needs a third principle to flow fully. We think of play as something we only do as children, but it is the fundamental method of learning in the natural world. Most martial practices have elements of play in their training, having set games with progressive rules of difficulty designed to keep people at an optimal level of learning and engagement. Play is a thing that is always curious. What? Yeah, you definitely feel it. It's always exploring new things. <laughs> and it's where we experience wonder and awe. By itself, sure, play can be too aimless, too emotional, and irresponsible even. Rubber tips. Ben's got armor, so you'll be fine, won't you, Ben? 
seek, but combined with the discipline to focus it to a task, the detachment to not take it personally, then there is unbelievable power <laughs> in play. If you can apply play to everything in your life, it gives you extra energy, making learning more engaging, therefore making you master tasks much faster. It's what turns boredom into a game and anxiety into a joke. <laughs> play is the home of creativity. It has no end goal. Its only objective is to create new things and to keep the game going for no other reason than for the joy of it. In the same way, you don't play a piece of music to get to the end of the song or dance in order to end up somewhere on the floor. Discipline creates a stable launch pad. Detachment lets go and trusts the process. And play is always mixing up the targets in the game to keep it engaging. If discipline is the how and detachment is the where, then play is the why. It does it for the sake of itself. Everything in life has game-like elements to it. Therefore, to learn how to play in balance with the other two principles is to live with enthusiasm. Discipline controls what it can, detachment accepts what it can't, and play just enjoys the ride. When life knocks you down, discipline will get you back up. Detachment will not take it personally, and play will bring the smile back to your face. These are pillars we can use to climb, with simple tools from ancient time. basic principles to help us grow. Bearings pointing to the way of flow. Yay! Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to the end for some real-time battles. And before you think, hey, Van Dabby Dozy must have lost his mind, I recommend watching this video multiple times. Let some of the concepts sink in, maybe even apply some of the concepts to your own life, and then give me some feedback in the comments below. As I'm always trying to translate Eastern concepts to a Western mind, try to find useful tools of the past that we can apply to the modern day. And a helping hand is always appreciated. Speaking of which, thanks so much to Ben from Source of Swords for being such an awesome battle buddy. He's such a talented martial artist and he teaches Scottish broadsword in Glasgow. Also massive thanks to Jason from A Great Alternative for your amazing camera skills and for editing the fight scenes. Go check out his channel folks as he's going to be releasing a behind the scenes slash documentary of the making of this video, which should be cool to see. All my patrons, you guys are legends. I really, really do appreciate the support. Basically on the Patreon page, you can donate wherever you can afford and I do monthly behind the scenes Q and A's and extra learning resources. And speaking of learning resources, I got some great inspiration for this very video from Wandrium's online courses on Zen, meditation and world philosophy. Wandrium is the rebrand of The Great Courses Plus and it's basically the Netflix of learning but now with even more courses to choose from. On one subscription you get access to thousands of courses on pretty much any subject you can think of from science, music, history, philosophy, you name it, they've got it. 
There's no homework or tests. You just learn whatever you want, whenever you want. Subjects are given by experts in their field from Ivy League universities or organisations like National Geographic and content is updated monthly. My favourite thing is you can download the audio of the lectures onto your device and listen to it whenever you want. Some of the past courses I've also enjoyed include The Celtic World, Surviving Any Disaster and Cooking Across the Ages as well as many others. So you can try it out for free by going to wandrium.com forward slash fandabbydozy or click the link in the description below. It helps support my videos plus helps you learn whatever you want. Now to some battles and bloopers. <laughs> oh, good shot. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I didn't go over the fence. <laughs> 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 Don't fire, oh yeah, not firing yet, all good, go, yeah, keep going. <laughs> I think you won that one. <laughs> oh, that was a good hit. Sorry. Big. <laughs> 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 